all the times I've known you You made me want to be a better man <laughs> Well, you're obviously, you know, put a lot of heart and soul into it I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying Okay, tell me your name My name's Steve Tuck And tell me, tell me um, how you're involved with foster kids Okay, I'm, we're with, I'm with an agency called Children's Home Society of West Virginia and uh, we're 114 years old. We've been started in 1896, and even in, in that early part of the turn of the century, we're helping uh, kids who had no homes try to find, you know, permanent, you know, long-term, home, lifelong homes for them. And so that's kind of been the history of this organization in West Virginia. And locally here in Parkersburg, I, we've been around about 30 years, and I've been there for over 25 of that. Just, just working with uh, kids in a, an emergency shelter and foster care and some other community-based programs that are really trying to help help kids who are who are having a tough go of it make a good transition to adulthood. Is it becoming more of an issue now? Um, for us, it's it's been pretty steady over those years. Um, I think the the situations that you face now are just are, are just what you'd think the the econ economics. That are that are making it hard for families and kind of you know causing there to be stresses and things like that, and the and the pressures on kids you know the the drugs and the and the um, you know the the um, negative hopelessness that they they kind of see in the world and you know trying to get through school and to make sense and, and into an adulthood that that they can you know they can feel like it's really gonna work for them. Yeah. What inspired you to get involved? Well, I guess I mean I've always I've always had a had a you know in, you really wanted to help be a, be in a helping kind of profession and as a as a young adult um, becoming a foster parent myself at a at a young age at twenty four of seventeen year olds four year olds three year olds nine year olds every every age group. Um, that's kind of got me into this as a line of work because soon after that, I, I started to work in in what's referred to as as youth services, youth care. Yeah, yeah. So, so you didn't have a particular inspiration towards that. You just kind of you wanted to help people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just kind of gravitated toward that. At a younger age, I worked in some soup kitchens, some homeless shelters in, in bigger cities and things. And then when I came to West Virginia, just kind of seeing the need for, for just, just being, a, being a, a role model and a guide, guide to young people became you know, kind of a, a passion for me. Yeah. Who was, your, who was your guide as a kid? Who was the person that, that uh, made a difference to you? Well, I I just say my my parents, my my extended family, you know, was I mean I I had I feel like I had a good upbringing, um, kind of came of age at a time when a lot of uh, a lot of idealism was there in the late sixties and early seventies, you know, towards uh, nonviolence, um, you know, simple living things like that. So so I had a lot of influences through the peace movement, through nonviolence and things like that in my formative years. That then kind of carried me into uh, into this as a kind of a line of work. But there wasn't one person. <laughs> no, no, it was a, it was a it was a you know whole range of people. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what do these kids need? They need they need um, people around them, adults, peers that that you know that that really believe in them and that. And that uh, you know set some set you know set a spark in them for something that they can they can uh, rise above you know a tough a tough life they've had. Um, they just need that that little bit of you know um, push you know spark to make them feel like they they can make it you know rise above some things that have been tough for them. Can one person make a difference? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I've I've worked in the, in the, with with youth in the foster care system for for thirty years, and I've, I've I've there's people that are in their forties now that I worked with, and they they can they can point to some people that, you know, just just gave them the gave them the right you know right inspiration at the right time. One person that 
you know, believed in them or encouraged them or, you know, kind of nudged them, teased them into, into, you know, into doing something that, you know, made, made their life, you know, made, made their life a success. Can you tell me a success story that you know about from, from your school that without giving too much away? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, we've, we've had, you know, we've had young people that, that came through very, very abusive situations and things like that. We're still able to, um, to, to, in one sense that I'm thinking of a specific thing is, is a, is a couple that, you know, uh, married at a young age, people didn't think they would make it or whatever, but they, they were managed to, you know, to, to make a go of it, even with tough circumstances, a car mechanic, she works at, uh, at, you know, fast food jobs, but they've, they've raised a family and, and kind of beat the odds of people that thought they weren't going to make it. So, you know, I have some things like that. We've had, We've had people that have come back and have, have gone to college and things like that from through our foster care programs and, and you know, just just because somebody believed in them and somebody kind of gave them that encouragement, helped them figure out how to apply for college or something like that, 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 uh, that we have those kind of cases. Yeah. The Orange Duffel Bag Foundation, um, they give an orange duffel bag to um, the kids that age out mm -hmm. uh, to go through their program. They get a Mac computer, a cell phone with time on it, socks, toothbrush, toothpaste. If you could put five things in an orange duffel bag, um, what would they be? And they, you can double up as well. <laughs> well. What would those five things be? If you could put in five things in an orange duffel bag for a foster And they are, kid. they are real concrete things like that, not... Not let's say anything you <laughs> let's say anything you want because um, I'm interested in both. Yeah, give me five concrete things and then a, a couple of. Okay. Uh, well, I think I think a computer is 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 important. Uh, so many of the young people we work with in our poor, low income neighborhood don't even have access to you know what they call the digital divide. I mean, they they get set back by that. And then once you see what somebody can do with that, I think a computer is a pretty good pretty good start um let's see things i think i think some sort of uh music some sort of creative outlet something that sparks them i you know i know you're a musician i my music is very important in my life and i think of the kind of things and it wouldn't necessarily have to be music it could be a a, a dvd of a of a movie that somebody's created or a you know or a book of poetry or something like that, but something, something that, you know, inspires the human, uh, human spirit, uh, would be, would be a good second, second place. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, let's see something, something that some you know, whether it's a, a picture or a locket from a family member, somebody that something that gives them some heritage down through the line that, that makes them see their, their part of, you know, something that's come along and that they, they have they have a you know a history and a and a potential to create that history for for their own children or some somebody else. So that's three things. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. Um, I think I think you know besides a computer, something that that gives them a sense of their own true um, skill or vocation. I. I I believe that everybody has that. Sometimes you have to find it, but if you don't have something that you, whether it's a skill or a, a vocation or or something, so that whether that's a diploma or certificate from something that shows you've you've you know you've accomplished something and you've you've taken a step towards towards mastery or or, or something like that would be would be big. So that's four. Uh, let's see. Um, I, I, I guess I would say something along the lines of, of something that's that's um, well made, a, a, a piece of clothing or a, or a, something that you have that shows somebody showing good workmanship and valuing a well made thing. Whether that's a like I said, a, a piece of furniture, a, a musical instrument, a, a, a you know some sort of clothing that's that's you know handmade and, uh -huh. and well well. Uh, you know, loved and, and brought to attention. Do you think a cell phone is important? 
<laughs> no, not really. Really? I, I suppose. <laughs> you guys don't get service up here. You know? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, I suppose that would be pretty important in this day and age to stay in touch with people and you know, yeah. feel connected. Have someone to call. Mm -hmm. I mean, because a lot right. of times these interviews that I'm trying to conduct, you can't get a hold of people yeah. to interview them. Right. You know, and so if you can't get a hold of them, they can't get a job. Right. Because yep. nobody can get in touch yeah, with them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I've been thinking of that. We we have a lot of issues around here about transportation, you know, keys to some car or something because... Yeah, no what are the issues that you have with kids that are aging out? Really, the main one, of course, is probably all over the country is jobs, is, is meaningful work, you know, that they can use as a stepping stone if they if they need to kind of, you know, balance back and forth between a job that, you know, starts paying some money and getting, getting some further training or something like that. But, um, you know, I suppose it's that way all over the country, but around here, the jobs... The, the lack of, you know, a job that really makes somebody feel like they're they're both contributing and also fulfilling themselves is, is the biggest thing. We have a lot of, um, uh, we, we actually have, you know, fairly decent housing. You know, the housing price is not bad around here, you know, reasonably compared to, you know, a lot of the bigger cities, a lot of other parts of the country. Um, and then transportation's a big thing. So we don't really have public transportation enough to, to you know, to, to really help or get somebody started with car payment and car insurance and things like that. Yeah. Um, and those things. So and then and then the others just the just the um, the infrastructure support systems. You know, there's not really good, very good health care for for young people that are you know aging out of foster care. There's not there's not um, you know, uh, a, a lead to, to you know, benefits or support that you know would kind of give them that leg up. Those are the those are the big challenges we fa we see and face. Yeah. Do you do you have um, issues with them being able to get driver's licenses? No, we're. I mean, we ourselves, our agency is very you know very good advocate for kids that way. Real real dogged about getting the you know, the documentation they need and things like that. So I'd say that's, that's it's not, not an really issue. a tough one here. Like if they're 16 or 17 and they the parent still has guardian rights over them, their abuser, we're, basically. We're, we're, pretty, uh, we're pretty strong advocates for those, those youth in those situations. We have, we have a variety of programs besides an emergency shelter we have and foster care. We have the two federal programs you're probably aware of, the Runaway and Homeless Youth Programs, the Transitional Living Program, and a Basic Center Program that, that work with kids not in custody. And, and we work real, real uh, positively, supportively to, to either help them, you know, advocate for themselves or to or reunite them with family. If you could speak directly to a foster kid or a kid that might be going through some troubles right now, what would you say? And, and I, you know, you speak directly to them every day, but yeah. in this video, what would you say? Yeah, the same kind of things we've said, just that, just, just, just look for the people that really genuinely are, are wanting to help you and, and, you know, take, take positive advantage of, the, of that help that they want to give because there's, there's plenty of good people out there and there's plenty of, you know, ones that, you know, aren't, aren't much help, but, but, you know, you, you as a young person will be able to figure that out and will know who's, who's really there to help you, who is your genuine, you know, interest in, in mind and, and seek them out and, and, you know, take advantage of the, the help they want to give you. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Thanks for what you're doing. Thank you.